It's walk-in now, and I'm in front of the town office where I work. I'm gonna take a little walk to the Koganiyama Jinja. I just wanted to show you how far it is to the uh, where they found gold in Japan. Woo. Well, it's kind of a warmer day today. Right on the corner there is the Kiyo Matsuchaya, which is a famous um, noodle shop. Oh, there's a nice doggy. I don't usually like to take this route. Partway there, I'll switch to a side road. So I'm going left here. This side road runs parallel to that one, and it's more visually pleasing, I think. So where am I walking? I'm going to walk to the Koganeyama Jinja, which is a Shinto shrine dedicated to the place where they found gold back in 749. In 749, it was gifted to uh, Emperor Shomu, who was in Kyoto at the time, I think. The emperor was in Kyoto. Nara. Nara. Maybe Nara. I think we were still Nara at that time. The capital of Japan now is Tokyo. Before that, it was Kyoto. And before that, it was Nara. And the emperor in 749 was Shomu. Now, his reign was called Tempyo the reign of Tempio. I don't know if I have that right, but oh, I just wanted to show you the... So this is the side road I'm going to be going down. This is the main road, and I'm not going to walk on that road because I don't like walking on it, but the road I'm walking on now is this one over here, which is really far off the main path, but this road is so much more pleasant and it has great uh, nature. Here's a nice ginger goes up there. I'm not going that way. The steps there are pretty treacherous. It's kind of a shrine that has fallen into disrepair. It's a fun walk if you're careful and the steps go way up there. Right next to it is Hinata Yochien, Hinata Kindergarten. It's no longer used. When I first lived in Wakya, it was still in use. I was in Wakya right around the time that Japan had the Daishinsai around the Miyagi area. There was a big earthquake in 2011. All along the coast, there were tsunami waves. This area had some damage too. One building in town fell over into the street. Lots of houses became unlivable. So yeah, so that emperor's reign, Shomu's reign was called the reign of Tempio. And when they found gold, they changed the name of the reign was changed from Tempio to Tempio Campo when they found the gold. And later they changed it to Tempo, Tempio Shoho. Before 749, Emperor Shomu was really big into Buddhism. It was kind of a, I don't know if it was a new thing, but he was really into it. He built a giant Buddha statue in Nara. It's called the uh, Daibutsu, Big Butsu, Buddha. He wanted to coat it in gold, gold plating. And he would prefer the gold to come from Japan, but at that time, no gold had ever been found in Japan. Okay, there's a, a shrine up there. Myo, Myo Kengu, maybe? Myo Kengu? Is that right? There's a, an older woman who lives up there. She's very friendly. She keeps the, the grounds immaculate. If any little weed comes up, she grabs it with her hands and pulls it out. This little community house right next to the temple, uh, after that earthquake in 2011, I went there and I was just talking to the people. We ate some onigiri, Japanese rice balls, together. At that time, there were lines at the supermarkets we didn't have electricity or water for a while. And if you went to the supermarket, you had to get in a line and they would allow you to have a certain number of items that you could buy from them. Oh, oh here's something interesting. I, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to come up here, but this is a Kayabuki roof house. The roof is made from thatch. Kayabuki. I think it was collected along the river bank, the Ai River, which is the main river in Wakia. Now this house is no longer in use. It's collapsing. Anyway, it's beautiful. Maybe 
nobody's around, I think I'm going to get just a little bit closer. I don't want to get too close or get in trouble. The walls are made from a kind of stucco kind of thing or mud. I'm sure it's not mud, but probably clay. One of my friends, he grew up in a house like that. And he said, well, once a year or sometimes they would close up the house and light the fire inside the house in the fire pit and smoke the inside of the house to kill all the insects that were in the thatched roof or that were living in the house. So it was to disinfect or de-insect that house. And then they'd open it back up again and air it out and get back to living. So those houses, the roofs have to be replaced every so often. I'm not sure how many years they'll last crossing the street here. So I'm back to the main road on the way to where they found the gold. There is a river that we sometimes film at, not we, but the Wakya town people. They make commercials there or they bring NHK, which is a major broadcaster here. They bring famous people there and they can pan for gold in the river, but I'm not sure I'm allowed to film there. <laughs> and I'm not sure because if I film there, I wonder if I get in trouble for showing the location of it because I'm not sure how legal it is for regular people like you and me to pan for gold in the river. And if we got the gold, I'm not sure we could keep the gold because I don't know what the laws are on regular people and gold in Japan. If you find it, can you keep it? Or how much can you keep? I'm gonna cross here. There's a Japanese postman. They ride uh, motorcycles. That was probably a Super Cub, which is a famous kind of a motorcycle. Plenty powerful enough that you can travel all of Japan on one. It's kind of become a, a hobby motorcycle. Collectors try to get different versions of the Super Cub and they refurbish them or try to make them more powerful. I think the Super Cub is a beautiful motorcycle. I don't know, it's kind of, I don't know, nostalgic to ride one or very Japanese style kind of thing to do. But their clutch, the clutch sound I don't much like every morning um, in several places I've lived, the uh, newspaper delivery person has driven a super cub, and I hate that sound of the super cub. <laughs> the clutch sound is pretty irritating in the morning if you hear it every day. It's just kind of something that grates on you after a while. Okay, now I'm going off the main road here, I'm going on another side road. I'm passing by the Sasaki Jutaku. There was a saxophone concert I uploaded to Wakya now. We have some events here. The town is trying to find different ways to use this house. It's got a side room back here, like a guest house, perhaps. I'm smelling some some smell it smells like creosote i think it's something they paint onto the wood to keep it from rotting now here's a famous pear these two trees right here are growing together looks like one a hand is laying over the other and two people together and their limbs are intertwined romantic lovers two entities going through life sharing their existence I think it might be sad when one of them dies, but I guess that's the price you pay for being with somebody. <laughs> Life is probably better if you spend it with somebody, I think, but one of, that, one of you eventually is gonna die first, so that's sad. I often joke with my wife about that. I say, oh, I'm gonna die first, and then you just go on without me. Be brave. You can do it. Just find somebody else. And uh, my wife seems good with that. I think she'll be fine. But occasionally my wife will flip it around and start talking about how she'll die first. She wants me to go on and be happy. I don't think she ever says to find somebody else. But anyway, um, then I start to cry a little bit, which is not super manly of me. But 
she likes doing that to see if she can make me cry. <laughs> okay, I wanted to show you down that valley there, there's a road that turns and it goes that way up the hill. But if you keep going down the valley, there's a river there. There's gold in that river that I don't think we're allowed to prospect, but I think that's where the gold originally was found in Wakia. Woo! I think this is the original road up through a valley to go over a mountain, Nonodake Mountain. It's like one mountain, but from where the valley goes, the mountain has a different name on each side. It's called Nonodake Mountain. And then on the other side of the valley, where the mountain continues, called Kagoboyama. Kagoboyama goes into Tajidi and Kogota area, which is the next town over. Now there's a Jinja we're going to, it's called Koganeyama Jinja. But Emperor Shomu, he was given the gold found from here in 749. We're coming to the main road here. It goes up the hill here through the pass. Actually, there's a tunnel you have to go through. Before this tunnel road was built, you would go back that way, right past where the gold river is. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if this is a good time to talk about it, but Wakia has kind of a connection to Korea because the person in charge of this area at the time gold was found was from a family with lineage to Korea. I think it's called the Bakje, Bakje Empire. It was in the southern western part of South Korea up until about 600 AD. So there was this empire, the Bakje Empire, and I'm butchering that name. I'm so sorry, I don't know how it's pronounced. Well, the final emperor, the final days of that empire, it ended, they were beaten by some other group in the area, and two of the sons escaped to Japan. One guy, his name was Zenko. Zenko stayed in Japan while his brother, he was probably the older brother, he joined up with some Japanese, probably funded by the Japanese government, and they went back to Korea to try and defeat the forces that had ended his empire. And they lost eventually that brother who went to South Korea. I think he was imprisoned and moved to somewhere in China and never heard from again. At least that's the way I believe the story goes. But his younger brother, Zenko, oh. stayed in Japan and was gradually integrated into the Japanese empire. His son's son's son, what's his name? Son's son's name was Kyofuku, I think his name was. His name was Kyofuku, Kyofuku. His name was Kyofuku. Well, I should go back. The family that stayed in Japan, eventually they were given the name of Kudara no Konikishi. Kudara no Konikishi. Kudara was the Japanese pronunciation of Bakje, that empire that was in Korea. Kudara no is a possessive, like an apostrophe S. And Konikishi, Konikishi means king or lord. So Kudara no Konikishi means lord or king of Bakje, that area in Korea, southern, western part of Korea. Eventually we got to the guy, the fourth guy down, Kyofuku. So Kyofuku came to this area. It was called the Mutsu province. And this was back in 7, 743, I think, that he came here. Earlier, he was named the governor of this area, Mutsu. But something happened, somebody else was put in the position and only later, for a second time, he was named the governor of this area, Mutsu. So Mutsu is a whole province. It's not just Wakia or... Mutsu province, also known as Michino Oku, or beyond the farthest road, it's the frontier land, the unconquered land, and its boundaries would change throughout the years because it was just beyond where the Yamato Empire the Japanese Empire had control. At this time in 748, 750, this I think is the Mutsu area. Wakia, present day Wakia, is actually between the current city of Ishinomaki and Osaki city. 
Mutsu was part of Miyagi Prefecture, part of Yamagata Prefecture, and part of Fukushima Prefecture. Okay, this is called Tempio Romankan, and this is the museum to commemorate where they found the gold in Japan. Tempio was the name of the empire of em Emperor Shomu, and it says Dekishikan, which means history building. On the right here is the restaurant, the conference hall, and the shop. And on the left here is a museum dedicated to gold. So it talks all about the history of gold, how they mined it, which was panning. They didn't dig a hole, they just used a bowl and they swished the dirt and water around to try to find gold dust or nuggets. Right next to the museum, Right now this is uh, closed because it's so cold, but gold panning. And here's a picture of the bowl. And here's some little gold you can find. There's some dirt there and you just pan that with a, a bowl. It's a fun activity. I've done it before. I'm not very good at it. There are people who I work with, whom I work with at the town office who are very good at it. Kugane, I'm not sure about the last one, but the top right is uh, Cha Shitsu. First sight of Koganeyama gold. In the year 749, the first gold discovered in Japan was sifted from sediment in a stream on this mountain. And we're gonna go walk this way and there's a nice park off to the left and Koganeyama Jinja is right at the end. A lot of people think that this little river is where they found the gold and it's possible, this one right here, it's possible gold was found here. It is a little river, but when famous people come here or they make commercials, they don't use this creek. Instead, they use the river that's down that way. The governor of this area, Kudare no Konikishi Kyofuku, he brought other people in his retinue who were descendants a few generations down from their reign in Korea. So he brought his own people, but they were of Korean descent. And I don't know if they intermarried at the beginning, they did later. So I don't know what percentage of pure blood Japanese or Korean or whatever, but I just gotta say that Japan was made up of people from all of the different peninsulas and areas. So Korea, China, it was kind of a mix of uh, Asian people. So. Uh, only until the emperor started and the empire, the Yamato Empire. I don't know when they became closed off from other groups, because every country does it, you know, you make your own group, you make your own town and you block it off and you know pay basically the people in your area and then you promote from that and you start your empire from that. It's not unnatural, everybody does it. So they found 900 ryo. That's what the first gift to Emperor Shomu was. 900 ryo. But how much is 900 ryo? I'm not sure. Maybe I'll put it down below. Soon after finding the gold here, 750, Kyofuku moved from this area back to, I think he first moved to Kyoto, and then soon after he moved to Osaka. It wasn't called Osaka back then, but he built a Bakje temple. I don't know if they called it Bakje temple, but the same kanji is pronounced Kudara. Kudara-ji, which is a temple. So he built a temple in the Osaka area. area. This is Koganeyama Jinja, Koganeyama Shrine. Yama means mountain. Perhaps this mountain used to be named Koganeyama, but if you go back behind that, this is all called Nonodake Mountain now. And then, like I said, over there is Kagoboyama, Kagobo Mountain, Kagobo Mountain. Little audio message here. If I push it. On this monument stone is engraved a verse from the Manyoshu, a book of ancient poems collected sometime after the year 759. The original characters are Old Japanese. Here is a modernized version. Translated to English, it might go something like 
Golden flowers will bloom on the mountains of Mutsu in eastern Japan, symbolizing the prosperity of the emperor's reign. To commemorate the finding of gold here, they wrote that poem referencing this area in Oda. This area was called Oda in the Mutsu province. Also, another possible evidence of gold being found here is this area where I'm standing or down there. After heavy rains, they found kawara, which are roof shingles or roof tiles. On the end of it, there was the mark of the Emperor Shomu and they've tried to recreate what the place looked like. Not a temple, but kind of like a Buddhist marker, a small little circular building that Shomu built or had built to mark this area. And over the years, people forgot about it or it was destroyed. Then this shrine was built, Hoganeyama Jinja. So originally it was Buddhist, a Buddhist structure. Eventually it became a Shinto structure, which is interesting. But you know, Shinto is a different religion from Buddhism. But if you go to any Buddhist temple, usually there's a Shinto shrine right next door. They're intertwined or connected in many ways. And I'm not sure why, but if you go to any one religion, Buddhist, you'll probably find something Shinto nearby. Last picture. Here you go. Now let's turn to these steps right here. And this will lead you down across the creek to the tea house. And here you can spend a little money. I don't think it's super expensive. It's quite reasonable. You can have green tea in a tea ceremony and a beautiful snacks. I say snack, it's kind of like a little cake, usually made from mochi, which is pounded rice, but it's very sweet, beautiful Japanese treats. So you eat that slowly and you drink your green tea, uh, green tea powder, and it's frothed up. The tea house is closed up right now. Possibly it only runs in the summer and spring and fall. But if you come to Walkia, be sure to come here. It's a great experience. Okay, and I think that concludes our, our walk today. I hope this was a little bit of interesting history. Well, I was gonna go use that restroom there. It's a cute little building. It's actually a restroom, but it's closed. So I don't think I'll be using that. And uh, I guess one last thing, right past this restaurant, <laughs> right past this toilet uh, is a nice little walk. It's overgrown now, but you can walk this way. So I'm just gonna sit here, relax a little bit. And I don't know if you can see me in the darkness, but thank you for coming to Wakya, and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye now.